Hey everyone, before we start the show, I want to tell you about StarStock. They're a new trading card marketplace, and the beta version of the site just went live in late April. I had an initial submission that was live on the site at launch, and I've already started making some sales. Their goal is to be a faster and cheaper solution to sell cards, and they're still looking for sellers to submit cards. They're offering a 5% sales commission with no submission or processing fees. You can send in your cards, and they do all the work. Cards are insured and stored in a vault, and you can have your cards shipped back to you at any time. Buy, store, flip cards at the push of a button. If you're interested in learning more, contact Mike via email at mike at starstock.com. They're currently looking for sellers who have rookie and prospect cards of current players for the major sports. For more details, contact Mike at mike at starstock.com or go to www.starstock.com. Let's get on with the show. You're listening to the Wax Pack Hero Sports Card Minute, a podcast where we discuss both the hobby and business sides of collecting. I'm your host, Mike Summer, and I want to help you buy, sell, and trade your way into a collection you'll love. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show. Well, for the last year, Gary V has been begging his audience to get on TikTok. It's a new social media site that was growing in popularity, and the free organic reach was remarkable compared to Facebook, Instagram, and most of the other more established social media platforms. At least that's what he kept saying. A brand new user could create content and get exposure to tons of people to help build their brand. And for the first several months, I completely ignored this advice. I don't need another social media account. I'm doing well enough on Twitter and Facebook, and I'm dabbling in Insta, as the kids call it. At least that's what my kids tell me. I don't need to mess with something else. At least that's what my thought was. Eventually, after hearing repeated reasons on why I needed to do this and hearing more and more about how his callers were having success, I decided I'd at least download the app. It just goes to show... Influencers gonna influence. Well, once I popped it open, I saw videos and they were filled with a bunch of teenagers doing lip syncs, dances, trick shots, and other random hijinks. It was pretty entertaining, but I didn't really see how I could create any sports card content. Most of the videos on TikTok are short, like 15 to 45 seconds kind of short. Traditional pack breaks and the other kind of stuff you see that's card related on YouTube, it didn't really seem to fit. And honestly, my analysis and thinking was pretty shallow with this. I didn't really push myself to think differently, and I probably kind of lacked some creativity. Well, earlier this spring, that started to change. One of the other podcasters I follow, Adam Palmer, and he was a guest on the podcast a couple weeks ago, well, he started talking about how he posted on TikTok, and he was sharing how his views and his followers were growing. He talked about the interaction that he was having with other people who were watching his videos. And I started to check out his content there, and and I started searching for other sports card content on the platform. And also, I was kind of seeing the user base start to age a little bit as I was just watching the other random videos. It seemed like I was seeing more and more parents creating videos, and I was seeing people who appeared to be in their 20s and 30s, not just teenagers anymore. And I was starting to see some videos about different types of content, like flipping items from thrift stores and garage sales. The types of things I was seeing was moving beyond those kind of dance moves and lip syncs and things like that. And that was enough to kind of push me over the edge. It was a brand new platform with a brand new audience, and it was in a format that would push me way out of my comfort zone. What did I have to lose? Some embarrassment if I completely flopped? If you've seen my mustache recently, you can tell that that's not really something I'm worried about. I don't really take myself that serious. Well, I posted my first video on March 28th, and it was a clip from me opening uh, a box of opening day, where one pack had both an Aquino and Jordan rookie in it. Let's just say it didn't really go viral. I probably had maybe 100 views in those first few days. But the seal had been broken, and now I was a TikTok content producer. It took me about a week before I ever posted my second video, and it was a quick announcement recapping a tweet from Ryan Cracknell when he talked about how the TOPS release dates were being adjusted to to be determined due to the corona printing press shutdown. It got a little more traffic, and I picked up a handful of followers, but it was still pretty uneventful. On April 12th, 
I decided I was going to try and post one video per day to see if maybe being on a regular schedule would help me gain some traction. Uh, so I've posted some sports card tips, podcast recaps, I've tried some card galleries, and a handful of other posts that kind of recapped some hobby news. Some combination of both the content and the timing seems to have done the trick. I've been amazed at the growth in both views and followers. At this point, I've grown from zero to about 340 followers in five weeks. So that's a pretty good first month, in my opinion. The views on the majority of my posts reach the thousands, and the one of my posts about using Terapeak to see actual selling prices for best offer eBay listings has reached over 13,000 at this point. The post I made about sport lots the other day is already approaching 11,000 views, and that's just in like four days. But here's the thing that really blows me away. It's the chart of my website traffic to waxpackhero.com. From the day I started posting regularly, my website traffic has climbed significantly. It's been up 40 to 50% month over month. Now, there's been quite a few good things going on for the, the podcast and for the site, but I have to believe a big portion of this growth is from people who are coming over from TikTok. I mean, when you look at the chart, it literally starts the day that I started going daily TikTok videos. You know, I haven't seen a big jump in the podcast traffic from it yet, and that growth continues to be kind of slow and steady, but I'm very pleased with the overall increase that I'm seeing as far as traffic to the site. Some posts continue to be more popular than others, but the ones that seem to be gaining the most attention for me are the ones that are focused on helping educate people or providing a tip or how to make collecting more easy or affordable. And so I'm going to continue to experiment with different topics and styles. I'm going to mix in some tips with different fun videos and things like that. But I'm happy I got past my reservations and I jumped in. And I can't wait to see what the next several months bring. So if you're building your brand, I highly recommend checking out TikTok. It feels way different than the other platforms, and that's probably because it is. However, it might just get you exposure to an entirely new audience. And so that's what I've learned in my first month on TikTok. I learned that you need to get over those reservations and take a chance on something different. Push yourself to stretch and grow and try new things. I also wanted to take a minute to remind you to check out Underdog Collectibles. And they're an online shop that's run by collectors and for collectors. They've been regularly breaking a variety of baseball and basketball boxes. But if you go to their Facebook page at underdog collectibles you can also find some singles that they have my favorite one right now that i'm thinking about pulling the trigger on is an autograph from panini americana of dj jazzy jeff you, you gotta like that kind of stuff too and so they're a, a fun little group that is um, like i said mixing in both breaks as well as singles that you can buy from them so check them out at udogcollect.com or by searching udog collect on twitter or facebook reach out Tell me if you're going to go ahead and get on TikTok and check it out, or even if you're going to step out of your comfort zone and try to get involved in another social media platform. Reach out, ask me some questions. I'd love to chat. I love to hear about the stories of businesses and collectors growing and expanding their horizons. That's some of the stuff that gets me super excited. That's one of the main reasons that I do this podcast. So reach out. Let me know if you took this advice, if you tried TikTok out, and what you think. Um, search for sports card content. See what you think about what kind of content is on there, and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Go ahead and also give me a review at your podcast app of choice. It really helps people find the show. Reach out at Twitter at the Mike Summer, and don't forget to check out the Hobby Hotline, the live call-in show that we do every Saturday morning. Follow at Hobby Hotline for more information about that. Well, that's all I have for you today. I'll catch you next time.